In this lesson, we will use the NSLOOKUP utility to assess organizational security. We are in the NSLOOKUP portion of the video series. This lesson is part of a video series that prepares you for the hands-on portion of the CompTIA Security Plus exam and is designed to give you hands-on experience with the operations and incident response section of the exam. So what is NSLOOKUP? The NSLOOKUP command is a network utility in Linux used to query domain naming system servers to resolve domain names to IP addresses. Network administrators, system administrators, and anyone troubleshooting network-related issues use the NSLOOKUP command. The NSLOOKUP command is used whenever there is a need to check or troubleshoot DNS-related problems, resolve domain names, or obtain IP address information. The NSLOOKUP command is used in the command line interface of Linux systems and is available on most Unix-like operating systems and Windows too. The NSLOOKUP command is used to diagnose and resolve DNS-related issues, verify DNS records, and perform DNS lookups for debugging networking problems. To use NSLOOKUP command, open a terminal and type NSLOOKUP, followed by the domain name or IP address you want to query. You can also specify a DNS server to query if needed. The rest of the how is what this video is all about, so let's get into it. To get started, grab the companion guide from the link in the show notes below. Also, if you like this content, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any new videos. So we're all set up with NSLOOKUP. We have our companion guide. We have Kali Linux on the side. So NSLOOKUP is name server lookup, and it has basically two modes. There's an interactive mode where we can type in some commands, and there's also just a command line that executes everything for us. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So this is a brief description about NSLOOKUP, and we'll go right into our Kali terminal. I'm going to right-click the desktop and say open terminal here. I could have done a control alt T. I also want to make this a little bit bigger so we can see our screen by basically hitting control plus. And I'm just going to type NS lookup, NS lookup. And now it's an interactive mode. And if I want to see, let's just say facebook.com, it'll give me some information and it goes ahead a little slow. At first, I get a communications error to this server and it tells me Facebook, the IP address to Facebook is 31.13.71.36. In other words, a DNS server is basically turning human readable names into IP addresses, so it maps them. It's like a big address book. So we probably will not remember or would know that Facebook has an IP address of 31.13.71.36, but we can remember Facebook. This is the IPv6 address. Let's take a look at another one. Let's do the Amazon.com. So we do Amazon.com, and it tells me there's a slight delay here with the local DNS server, which we'll talk about momentarily. But it tells me these are the IP addresses associated with Amazon. So we have the 205, we have the 52, the 54, and I also can take a look at Apple.com as well. And slow because of a communications error, but ultimately it gives me the Apple IP address with the 17.253.144.10 and the IPv6 version of it. So that's NS lookup just real quickly. Let's exit out of this portion here, clear our screen, get it back on top and get a nice new fresh NS lookup screen. NS lookup, and this time I'm just going to put Facebook in here proper so we can observe the output. So with that coming up, I'm going to do some housekeeping here. And let's go ahead and take a look at just observing the output. So what do we have here exactly? So let's break this down a little bit. So I put in NS lookup. It's an interactive mode. I put in facebook.com. Let's disregard this communications error for a moment, but this is my local domain server. So this is a domain uh, server on my local machine. It's the 10.0.1.1. And it essentially has a copy of friendly human readable names and their IP addresses. And this is what the non-authoritative answer means. It means it has a copy of that database locally stored as the DNS server. And we put in Facebook, we get the IP address. It also gives me the IPv6 address. And this is really that straightforward. So we observe the output. It's pretty straightforward, as we mentioned before. Let's do a little housekeeping. So we know what the server is. That was my local DNS server that has a copy of that address book that turns human readable names into IP addresses. 
that's DNS. What's, that's what DNS does. We It's a non-authoritative answer because it's a copy. We have the name of the URL that we put in here or the server, and we have the address. So let's scroll up and take a look at a mail exchange record and how would we do that. So I'm going to um, stay in the interactive mode. I'm going to set the query type to equal MX, which means I'm looking for a mail exchange uh, record. I'm doing Facebook. I get a little bit of that delay because of some networking issues, but ultimately it goes in and it gives me the mail server that's responsible for handling mail on behalf of Facebook.com. It has this name here. This is the mail exchange server, and it has a number here in terms of priority. It looks like they only have one. So since our query is set up to MX, let's take a look at a couple of others. So let's go ahead and just take a look at, um, let's just see Amazon. Let's see what Amazon's mail exchange server looks like again we get this little error here it has amazon smtp simple mail transfer protocol that's the mail exchange server and this is what it looks like so now we know what that dns name is for it let's go ahead and take a look at netflix while we're at it here let's see what netflix looks like and netflix is going to give us a series of them so down here what we see here is, is again this is the priority so we have a couple of mail servers here, mail exchange servers. And in this case here, the primary one is SASPMX L or one. That's one dot google.com. That's the first one. If that one isn't available, they'll go over to the five. This is alternate one, alternate two. And then these two are the backups. The first one is number two and number three. And these numbers are the priorities. And these are mail exchange or mail servers that work on behalf of in this case here, it was Netflix, and we can see that here. So great, we have that set up. Let's go ahead and exit. We can clear to get this back on top. And let's go ahead and take a look at a text. Let's take a look at a text record. But first, let me do some uh, cleanup here. And we wanna find a text record. So name servers or DNS also has regular text strings that you can put in here. So I'm going to do NS lookup, go into interactive mode, set the query type, equals txt and we're going to take a look at facebook again let's see what do they have and we see that facebook has some text information so we have a number of records as you we've done in class where you can put in mx records you can put in the a record which is basically a c name or a canonical name to an ip address now we're looking at a text record in dns and we see here we have just regular text string. This is a Google site verification text string. So this is a way that we can verify Google's with this unique key code here. And this is how we can verify that the site Google by generating this code ourselves, we can do this with basically a hashing uh, algorithm or we can just verify the code that Google gave us. We also have the sender policy framework. In this case here, Facebook is redirecting it to a different uh, server. But at this point here, you can take a look at these text records. So if you're ever asked, how do I find out just regular text records? You can do an NS lookup, set the query type to TXT, and you get the output here. Great. So let's go ahead and uh, exit out of this. And I want to do something a little different here. So if you notice, I have my communications error here with this uh, server. So in this case here, I'm going to do Amazon.com, right? So Amazon, and we got the communication error. I'm going to do a little housekeeping to clean this up. And we're going to look at the name server. And let's do an authoritative one. So first, let me go back and clean this up a little bit. Let me exit out of this. First, we're here. We're looking good. I'm going to come here, clean out and clear the screen and just do this a little bit better again. So in this case here, we're going to change that name server. I was at the 10 that one. So now I'm going to do NS lookup as I mentioned before, and I'm just going to do Facebook and the non authoritative server that's doing that work for me here is the 10.0.1. I'm going to jump around a little bit. I'm going to change that server to 1.1.1. So it's really cloud flares 1.1.1. And the default server is now um, 1.1. That's the DNS server that's going to give me a copy of its address book. In other words, that's where there's a copy of the human readable names to the IP address correlation. So in here, I'm going to do Amazon again, and let's just see what do we get. 
we still get that communications error that's fine but now the server that's serving up this information is the 1.1.1 and not the 10.0.1.1 so we can change the server that's going to give us that address information and we may want to do that for a variety of reasons the local dns server in this case here may be problematic it may have some stale data i may want to go to a different server and get fresher or more updated information in this case here also here's another thing i can do i can also set the query type here and i'm back up into this section here i'm going to set the query type into name server so this time i really want to know what is the authoritative name server that actually has the original information so in this case here i'm going to go to facebook and after the communications error, these are the name servers that have for Facebook that has the actual copy of the human readable name to IP address. So Facebook looks like they have a couple of them. They have uh, C, they're making it real simple, abcd.nameserver.facebook.com. And they have these in a number of places. Let's exit out of this so we can bring the screen up. I'm going to clear. I'll do that again and explain it just slightly differently. So we have NS lookup. We're going to set the query type to an NS, which is name server. Uh, we saw we did Facebook. Let's take a look at IBM. Let's see what IBM does. And IBM has their DNS servers globally distributed. In this case here, it looks like there's a US Central 2 at Akamai.net. There's also just a regular name server one. They have their reasons for 206. Looks like there's one in Europe, one in two and five. Another U.S. Central 3, U.S. West 2. So these are copies or name servers that are geographically dispersed. So that way when you're looking for a name to IP resolution, and let's just say it's IBM's, you can find it directly. And this is where their name servers, uh, these are the names of their name servers. Okay, so I'm going to exit out of this and get out of interactive mode. Clear the screen to bring us on top. And just do a little bit of housekeeping and I don't always have to stay in interactive mode so I'm just cleaning up here and we can go right ahead and actually run these commands proper so I can just go right ahead and come in and look at NS lookup I'm going to say minus type is an a record an a record is an IPv4 hit enter and it gives me the information and goes right back to a command line prompt so in this case here I'm looking for the IPv4, which is what an A record is, Facebook, and this is the IP address, which we saw before in interactive mode. I can up arrow, and if I want to see the IPv6, it's four A's. I now get the IPv6 version. If I want to do this for Facebook and get the MX record, I can stay just at the command line. I type MX, and we'll get that same MX record that we were looking um, for before, a little bit of a communications error and here it is this is the MX record or the mail exchange record and then one more if we want to see the text record we can just use this as the command line and the reason why we may want to do this is we may want to script this if you're looking for information or you just want to be able to do this um, without staying in interactive mode so these are the four ways that we can use the command line in non-interactive mode so I'll do a little housekeeping again as we normally do I'll clear the screen on this side. Well, let me just get on this side to do that. And let's go into debug mode. So in debug mode, we're going to get a little bit of information here. So in debug mode, I'm going to debug. I hit enter. And in debug mode, it gives me a little bit of information. So we see Facebook.com. It's uh, type A, which is an A record, which is basically turning Facebook.com into an IPv4 address. This is great. The time to live is the time that it's going to take for this information to time out from a caching perspective. And what we mean by cache is I have a copy from this local DNS server of this information. So I have a time to live, which means at some point when I query this server again, if the information, if the time has elapsed, it's going to go out to another server to get an updated copy of this information. So we see here we have the class A. In this case here, this is the type quad A, which is IPv6. This is the IPv6. We have our time to live, and we have some additional information here, which is the additional 
IPv6 IP address. Okay, great. So this is debug mode if you need to get a little bit more information. And then I'm going to exit out of this here, do some housekeeping on this side, and then head over to a user interface here. So I'm gonna do this by the toolbox. So you can do this if you want using a web utility. And I'm going to MX toolbox. And we can do the same thing that we were seeing before here. I'll leave it here actually, so that way you can see this. And MX lookup, I'm gonna put Facebook in here. And I'm gonna just do a mail exchange lookup here. And I get that information we were looking for. So this is the SMTP in VV Facebook. And if we come back here, I'm going to open the terminal. We saw this already before when we did one of the lines. And actually, let me just do it this way. You can use a utility like a web utility to actually pull up some of this information. MX Toolbox is happens to be a very helpful one. So this information is the same as this information. And we don't have to worry about the 10, but here's the preference we were talking about. We'll come back here. Let's do that for um, an IPv6. If we wanted to get the IPv6, we can drop down here, take a look at the four A's here, and then we get that IPv6 address here. So same thing, when we were on this side here, we had just recently did that with debug mode, and you see this IP address here, IPv4, same thing, we were using the command line tool. Now you can use a web utility to do that as well. Let's see this with one more. We got the text record that we could use. Let's see what Facebook looks like on the text record so we drop down here let's see if there's a text lookup for us and here's all the information we saw here with the google site verification we had to send a policy framework on this side here going to spf so we have a couple of ways we can do this and this is the well this is facebook's here i can just do the text record here let's see what do we have great excellent so we see that here I'm going to clear the screen just to bring it on top. It's the last one here, and this is the text record, and it looks very similar to what we see here on this side. Back to our companion guide, you can use MX Toolbox to do a lot of the functions that we did before to query domain naming services or name servers to get A records, uh, quad A records, text records, and a number of information. And really, that's it with NS Lookup for this series. And I'm glad you were able to go through this. You can learn more about NS Lookup looking at the uh, man command. So if we want to, we can go here for manual NS Lookup. You just have to spell it properly. And here we have the full command that gives us some of the tools that we used here and some of the switches that we used in terms of type. So there you have it. I'm going to close out of um, the terminal, come back to the top here, and that's NS Lookup. Hope you enjoyed it. See you at the next lesson.